Kia ora, 10. In this video, I'm going to go through the practice task that's on the um, school website and on the NZQA website called um, the Big Day Out Carbon Credits. And it's one that, um, if you're in my class, you've got that in your book and you've had a go at it. Please, please, if you're watching this, try and do the problem as we go. You'll get much more out of it that way. And I'm going to start by reading through all of the stuff. I don't want you to forward through that. I want you to look again at what we're trying to figure out. Because the tricky thing with these questions is, is trying to work out what do I have to do. It's actually not doing the maths, right? It's doing the maths and communicating what you've done. So it's really worth it to have a highlighter pen so that when you're reading, you can get the key things out of it. In this one, there are three bits of the task that we need to think about. And we're going to try and write down some lists of stuff that we need to work out. Okay, so let's read through it quickly. Um, the Big Day Out is a three-day music festival. At the Big Day Out, audience members can buy Green Days, purchase Green Days. The organisers are going to use all of the money from those to buy carbon credits. So you're probably going, what is a carbon credit? Right, well, these carbon credits are things that they can use to buy trees to offset the carbon emissions from the event. So it's a bit like if you're, when you're little and you go to one of those... Um, Fairs where you play silly games and you win lots of tickets and then you can go and claim a prize using your tickets, right? Like if you go to time zone, you can do things like that. That's kind of how carbon credits work. You get your carbon credits and you use them to buy the trees. And then what we have to do here is to work out the lowest number of trees, minimum number of trees, that you can buy using the carbon credits that you've made. This bit here is telling you how you've got to work. Um, it's not to do with the task, but it is important. So some things that I'm going to go on and on about later. You must show your calculations or you will get not achieved. You have to use correct mathematical statements. So that means things like no running arithmetic, where you have equals, 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 equals. And these things are actually not the same as each other. And you have to clearly communicate your strategy and method at each stage. And you have to link it to the context. So I'm going to show you later what a not achieved answer to this problem would look like so that none of you waste your time doing work like that. All right, finally we get to some numbers. Right, remember we've got three bits here. So we can already write down kind of the three steps we've got. The first thing is what is the money or the income from the green days, right? So what money do the organisers make from selling green day tickets? Then, with that money, how many carbon credits can they get? And then with the carbon credits, how many trees can they get? Okay, so the first thing we've got that we need, obviously, is how many people were there at the big day out? Well, there were 19,000 but that's to the nearest thousand. So we'll come back to that. And if you freak out when you see that to the nearest thousand, don't. You could use the 19,000 for the whole task and you'd still get achieved. Okay, but we're going to get a little bit um, fancier with that, but not yet. Big day out attendees can choose to buy no green days, one, two or three when they get their tickets and 23% of attendees bought green days. In the next bit, of those who purchased Green Days, one quarter bought three day tickets, one third bought two days, and the rest bought one day. But the most important words in here are these, of those who purchased Green Days. Okay, so these two are linked. One Green Day costs $1.34, and then we've got information about the carbon credits. The carbon credits cost US dollars and we're given an exchange rate. So you should feel good when you see that, not freaked out, because everyone is doing pretty well with doing exchange rate calculations. So think of, it, think of this as a chance to show off what you can do in some ways. And then lastly, the organisers can buy 10 trees with every three carbon credits. So this is what we call proportional reasoning and we've done quite a lot of that already. All right, so let's get going. The first thing we've got to work out is the income from the green days. So if you've got the um, sheet in front of you, use that, because I'm going to try not to go up and down the, the screen too much. So let's start with the heading. 
income from GDs. Underline column. Right, the first thing we've got is the audience. So the audience is 19,000 to the nearest thousand. So let's see what that means. It means that here's my 19,000. And that's accurate to the nearest thousand. So the number could be anywhere from 500 below that or 500 above that. And because we're trying to find the minimum number of trees, I'm going to use the conservative number here. So I'm going to use 18,500. And I'm going to write that down. Assume 18,500 people to be safe or to be conservative. Okay, how many bought green days? Right, well we know that it's 23% of 18,500. So I'm going to write this down. 0 0.23 times 18,500. And that gives me 4,255 4, people. All right, so again, I've got what am I calculating? And I've underlined it. Now we have to work out how many buy each type. So the three different things they can buy is they can buy three day green day, two days, or one day. So three days. Well, it's a quarter of these guys, all these people. A quarter of, right? Of means time, so it's a fraction of an amount. A quarter of 4,255 gives me this number. Now, if we're just doing this with no context, we round up, but we're going to round it down. All right, we're going to round it down. So rounding down to be conservative, or rounding down because we're finding the least number of trees in the end. So that's three days. Two days, right, write down two days. Underline it. One third of 4,255 gives me 1,418.33. So we're rounding that down as well. Now that one's an obvious one to round down, right? And then the rest bought the one-day ticket. So what does the rest mean? Well, how many people bought tickets? 4,255. And how many bought three days? That many. And how many bought two days? That many. So the leftovers bought a one-day ticket. So how many Green Day tickets did they sell? Well, 1,063 of them bought three tickets each. 1,418 bought two tickets each, and the rest bought one ticket each. So that gives me 7,799 7, green days. And then income will be $1.34 times 7,779. That gives us quite a big number, $10,450.66 in NZ dollars. Now you could round that up there, that looks kind of silly. Um, you could leave it like that. It's never a bad idea to leave things alone until the very end of a problem. So that's what I'm going to do in here. But you could have done a couple of other things. You could say this, and then just say what you're doing, right? So if we can see your assumptions, that really helps. We could say to the nearest dollar, or we could say 10450 to the nearest $10. Both of those things have been conservative, so that's fine. I, I wouldn't round this up at all. In fact, I wouldn't round that one up because we actually don't have that much money. Okay, so I would round down. But I would just keep going with the full number as is because we're about to do the next part of the problem. So let's go back up and just see what that was. Right, where are we up to? Well, we've done the income from green days. Right now we're up to how many carbon credits can I buy? So looking up at all that stuff we started with, that started off looking like quite a lot of info, 
let's just clean it up and see where we're down to. Well, we've done all of this bit, right? So now we're down to this bit here and this bit here. So we're making reasonably good progress. Okay, next heading. Carbon credits. Well, what have we got? We've got this much New Zealand money to spend on credits. So we have to work out how many US dollars that is. Now some of you are doing this really easily as follows. So I'm going to do this two ways. I'll do it with the nice slow arrow diagram and I'll do the one step calculation. Both of them are completely fine, right? As long as you're not just jumping to an answer. So what we've got here is we've got the New Zealand dollar amount and we're dividing it by this and we're getting 8,522.80 US dollars. Okay, but if we go a little bit more slowly, we can start with the exchange rate. We've got one US dollar is worth this many NZ dollars. If I want to work the other way around, if I want one New Zealand dollar here, I've got to divide by 1.2262. And working with proportional reasoning, I do the same thing to both sides, right? So one New Zealand dollar is worth this many US dollars. I'll just change my pen. Okay, so US dollars 0 0.81528. And here I've got one New Zealand dollar. So this way round is telling me the value of one US dollar. This way round is telling me the value of one New Zealand dollar. And this is what I want because I've got New Zealand dollars. And I need to change them into American dollars so that I can go shopping for credits. Okay, so I'm having issues with squeezing this into 15 minutes. So this bit I've pre-written up so that we can see what's going on. Okay, now I've used the exchange rate the right way around to work out my US income. Okay, and so my US income is this much. Right, so we get that using the new exchange rate. And now we have to work out how many credits we can buy. And we can buy... Um, $18 is the cost of one credit. So how many credits can I buy? Well, it's going to be this much, my income, divided by 18, just as if I'm in the supermarket and I'm shopping for apples. Right? If I've got $100 and the apples are a dollar each, I'm going to go 100 divided by 1. So it's the same idea here. Right? I've got 800, 473 credits is what I can get. The last thing is how many trees can I get for those credits? Okay. So we're told in the words that I can get 10 trees per 3 credits. There are different ways to go here, but what I can do is work out, well, how many blocks of 3 credits have I got? Well, I've got 473 divided by 3. So that's 157.66 lots of 3 credits. Right? So um, the easiest way to do this, I think, is what I've done here, where I say I've got 157 lots of three credits, and I can get 10 trees for each of those. So that gets me to 1570. And so what we need to say is a final sentence, which is something like this. So the minimum number of trees that the organizers can buy will be 1570 trees. Now, there are some things I could change in here that I could play around with. For example, I could see what happens if the audience size drops by, say, 10%, or I could change the exchange rate, or I could see what happened if I slightly changed the cost of the green days or the carbon credits. But I haven't got time to do any of those now. I've just managed to get us through the basics in 15 minutes. So let me know if this has helped. Thanks for watching.